Okay, so let's look at the lungs. So the right has three lobes, and you have to identify the lobes. Superior, middle, inferior, and you'll see these little lines that kind of separate them. You have a horizontal fissure and oblique fissure. Why did they name them the way they did? <coughs> horizontal fissure. Yeah, it's more horizontal. And what's a fissure? Like a deep groove and oblique fissure because it's running at an angle. It's oblique. So the right lung has three lobes. The left lung only has two and it has an oblique fissure. Also, when you think about lungs, apex is up at the top. The base is at the bottom. Okay. Notice the left lung has a notch called the cardiac notch. Hmm, I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Heart. Yeah, because the heart is. So the heart's kind of sitting around in there, so there's a little room for the, the cardiac cavity in there. Now, if you look in the medial surface, they have a hilus. Remember seeing that term hilus or hilum? It's just kind of like an indentation area where we have blood vessels coming in and out. Here we do have blood vessels coming in and out, but this is also where the bronchus comes in. So that's just the hilum, it's just the indentation area. Where was the cardiac notch? On the left lung. So if you look, see, look at the thing oh, right behind okay. Corin. You see that the one that has the little, the is the little notch break. You see that Corin? There's a little notch on that left lung, so you can see that with the heart peeking this way out. Okay, that's the only one that has the little notch to it. This gives room for it. Now, also, a little reminder about pleura. Why do I say it's a little reminder? You should learn about pleura. Remember learning about parietal and visceral pleura associated with the lungs? So the visceral pleura right on the surface of the lungs, parietal pleura is out here, and you got that little cavity in between with a little bit of fluid. So we have a little bit of fluid. So when you're breathing, that little bit of fluid allows things to kind of slide real easily, not, you know, so it won't create a lot of friction. But here's the, the kicker. Big reason why I have part of this is it helps with inspiration. These guys here are not physically attached to the, to the ribs or out here. They're not physically attached. The only place we have attachment is up here. So it actually allows them to couple to the thoracic wall. So it's, I always say that take two glass slides, get it wet, put them together. They slide, but it's really hard to pull them apart. So when the, the rib cage moves out, it helps move the lungs out. So it helps to couple them to the, the thoracic wall, aids in inspiration. So just, you have just a little bit of fluid in there. Not too much. So let's see. This is what Mary was looking at. We have a model that looks kind of, or two models that look, look similar to this. And what this is showing you is all these alveoli, all these little dots here are alveoli. So you have tons of alveoli. That's where gas exchange takes place. They are very thin walls. What type of epithelium would you see in the alveoli? Simple squamous epithelium, okay? The alveoli are surrounded by capillary beds. They pretty much cover the alveoli. The, the physiologists actually refer to it they had it they refer to as sheet action. It looked like blood was covering the alveoli like a sheet because you have a lot of area for gas exchange. It almost completely surrounds the alveoli. These are part of the pulmonary circulation. So this is where gas exchange is taking place. The also what you'll see associated with the alveoli, these here are elastin fibers. They look like little rubber bands. There's a huge elastic component to your lung tissue that's very important in respiration. When you inhale, you actually have to work to inhale. But when you exhale, most of you normally don't have to work to exhale. I just stop, the firing stops. If you've just stretched out the lungs, you got like stretched out elastic fibers, what do they want to do? Shrink. They want to recoil. That aids in expiration. So having that normal elastic component of the lungs aids in expiration. What would happen if I lost some of those elastin fibers? If I lost some elasticity to the lungs? Am I going to have to now work yes. to exhale? And that's going to cost a little more energy. People with emphysema, they're losing some of the elastic component to lungs. Some of the cigarette smokers that end up getting emphysema. 
as you age. The yeah, they're gonna you're gonna see them working, and they'll be lots of times. Well, you'll see them they'll, they'll be hunched over in chairs, kind of trying to force air out of their lungs because it's not they have to work to exhale now. So if you lose the elasticity, which can happen when from cigarette smoke, there's certain genetic diseases that contribute to the loss of elastin fibers. So they have they they are going to have a hard time getting air out. And actually, it's an example of obstructive pulmonary disease. They have a hard time getting air out of their lungs. Now, also, you'll notice here they showed you a lot of smooth muscle around the bronchioles. As you move down that tracheobronchial tree, the amount of cartilage goes de decreases. Once you hit the bronchioles, there's no cartilage anymore. But you'll have a significant amount of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, isn't it sensitive to certain things? It'll make it contract or relax. Mm -hmm. So we have the smooth muscle can change the diameter of airways. And we'll talk about that in lecture. Like what's the, what's the effects of, say, epinephrine or norepinephrine when you're in fight or flight mode? What do you want to happen to the airways? You want them to, you want them to, to we don't call it vasodilation, that's a blood vessel. Okay, just bronchodilation, so bronchodilation. So you relax this bronchial smooth muscle. So airways, you can have more flow in the airways. If I have things like histamine, histamine is a bronco constrictor, makes it harder to breathe. So there's certain things that can change the diameter of the airways because the smooth muscle is sensitive to certain things. The pepper spray <laughs> pulses those ba babies off because I've pepper sprayed myself before. All right. All right, so here also they'll show you on the models the parietal visceral pleura, and here's that pleural cavity. So I'm going to see if you can figure out in those two models which is supposed to represent the visceral pleura which is the parietal pleura, which is the pleural cavity. You gotta look at it real carefully. The two, we have two different models. They're slightly different, so make sure you look at both of them, okay? So I'm going to pretty much stop here because I'm gonna let you look at some of the slides on your own. Because you have seen alveoli, believe it or not, before. Because you, when you did simple squamous epithelium, you actually were looking at the alveoli and the lungs. So I'm gonna have you look at some of the slides yourself. I'll put some slides up too, but I have two demo slides that you don't have access to. I'm going to show you a patient with emphysema, and I'm going to show you a patient with edema, pulmonary edema. And I want you to make note of what you notice after you've looked at the regular slides, what's wrong, what's up, why does it look different from the normal slides. Okay, so I'm going to show you people with two different conditions. Okay, all right, so I'll let you guys look at some models and look at some of your slides.